So, hey, this is Cabo Monzon from the dark silence of death, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Oh, there it is. There you hey. are. Habo's done a few things with me in the past. We've done a couple of those game shows with me, him and Chris, and good guys down from Mexico. All right. Sounds amazing. Well, good to freaking have you on the show. You doing all right, man? Yeah, everything is fine. Everything's everything good. is great. Yeah, just that um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I came for the weekend to visit my parents. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just don't feel like going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> are they so, near you or are they? No, they, they are. I don't know. It's probably like a 15 minute drive. Oh, okay. But uh, the place where I, where, where I bought the house, it's like, uh, you know, it's still filling in, you know, it's outside the city. Mm-hmm. You, you get your stores and everything, right? You're not by, by yourself, but it's a lot of, of space that is just, you know, empty. Right. A lot of things that are empty there, and I don't know. I just get out the front door here, and I can see everyone just. And it's the the same place that I grew up in, right? Right. So I just like, yeah, I'm just gonna stay here for a while. But <laughs> I, didn't, I, I just didn't thought about the too many people. Yeah, right. I, I'm not really used to this. It's like ten years that I live by myself, and I'm just here and open doors everywhere, and I close the door, shut the light, and I feel like my dad <laughs> now. So nice. <laughs> you finally become your dad. Have to happen, right? Bound to happen. <laughs> it's true. It's just a matter of time. I, I will, of course, turn into my mother at some point. Right. But... We will have to. I mean, we had these band picks that we had to take for 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 some press kit for for the new press kit, mm-hmm. and they take you like I don't know, probably like twenty pictures of yourself, like doing different things. And there was this one picture that I showed my mom. And, oh, you look like your dad. Like, <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> and I just took it. Oh, yeah, I do. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a blessing or a curse, depending on uh, on your situation, right? I mean, it's, it's pretty cool, right? But uh, you don't really want that on your band photos, right? <laughs> no, that's true. And I never, <laughs> no. I never like, thought reference I'd... point, my dad. <laughs> right. I never thought I'd get to this point where I would, uh, you know, be looking like my parents. It's kind of weird, but here we are. Yeah, that's. I, I just thought that I probably was not bound to live long enough, you know. But man, what the hell? <laughs> nice. I'll take it. <laughs> so, so hey, never know. Right. So how are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. Really? Just, great. Nina's over yeah. in Finland, so she's nice and cold. And you're in what is it, about ninety there? You're in Mexico, right? Yeah. yeah no. Actually, I don't. It's it's quite fresh these days. I think that we're gonna like a heat wave in a couple of weeks, but right now it's it's pretty fresh. Nice. So hey, are you, fresh. Are you on Celsius or Fahrenheit? Celsius. Oh fuck. Both awesome. of you guys. I'm at I'm at like nine Celsius. So fucking cold. Really cold. Also, it's now pitch black outside. So <laughs> but I guess that applies for you know this is why finland is the most metal country in the world it's always dark (laughs) yeah it's it's like we live in perpetual darkness like our the weather is as cold as our hearts (laughs) and the number one export is metal bands right right yeah it is it's a real thing you know most metal bands per capita that's crazy what's the metal scene like in mexico uh in mexico the problem with that is that a lot of people to love metal, you know, but they always consume metal that is done outside the country. So wherever you get to the point where you can get to a big festival with your band, you are doomed to forever be below 4 p.m., you know, playing like an opening act because there's really, I, I can think of maybe two bands that have ever been real, real deal headliners, huh. but you, you really never heard of them. I mean, the, the the music market here in Mexico is more like, you know, music to dance to. Right. That's what they want. Music that you can play at a wedding. And that's what pretty much everyone does. Right. So you mentioned festival. You guys are playing the Monterey Metal Festival here in uh, December, right? That's what we're supposed to, but we're not supposed to. I mean, we're not on the bill yet. Ah. 
that's that's really weird. I mean, we're supposed to be playing the Hell and Heaven Fest and uh, the Monterey Metal Fest, but we're still oh, with the Hell and Heaven we have the confirmation, but we're not on bill yet. So huh. I mean, that's the kind of things that you don't really want to go through. But the other one, the Monterey Metal Fest, we're supposed to be playing it, but we haven't received either confirmation or or the uh, or the letter. That's a pretty so, big yeah. festival down there, right? Right. Yeah, but they. They have a couple here, the Mexico Metal Fest and the Monterey Metal Fest. The first one has been like six editions, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more like a, like a true metal fan, you know? They give you like your Cannibal Corpse, your Mayhem, your, I don't know, uh, all kinds of bands that are not really meant to, to have their own fest, you know? They are just sprinkled here and there. But now they just select these bands and they have now a, a fan base following. And the Monterey Metal Fest, it was more like that kind of music that you go into a bar and you and you ask the band to play, you know, like your Motorhead, your Danzig, right. so your more mainstream that. metal, more mainstream metal, but more like you know old school. I, mean, I think that they had one. I think that they had Hatebreed on oh, the okay. first one, but they play like at four p.m. Like, yeah, we want you here, but we don't want you in the headline, man. We want <laughs> Twisted Sister on the headline. I go like, well, they're gonna be there, so I'll take it, right? Right, and the last, the last before it was when Children of Bottom, which is like kind of a bittersweet note there that the festival is back, but they can't have Children of Bottom anymore. So, yeah. Rest in peace, Alexi. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. So let's talk about the Dark Silence of Death. I know you guys. Uh, single is the shape, which I absolutely love. Are you guys <laughs> writing all together, or are you writing separately and then bringing it into the studio? Well, I gotta uh, interrupt you there. That's not the band's name, uh, or then you have <laughs> misspelled it in our materials. Because did, I did say? you just say the dark sounds of? Did I say sounds? Yeah, I think you said the dark sounds of death, but oh it says God. dark silence. It is the dark death. silence. I'm gonna go back and listen to it because I think. Mm. You're wrong. But anyway, yeah. the dark silence of death. Um, are you guys writing together, or are you guys, uh, you know, writing in your own separate spaces and then convening or emailing stuff? Well, it was weird because, uh, for instance, in, in the living, we agreed that we were going to work together. But right then, the pandemic started, you know. Mm -hmm. We had most of the album set, so we, you know what? Let's work with what we have already. And then we're going to start working on, on new stuff. With The Shape, that's where we started, well, shaping the future of the band. We had like a couple of riffs only, and we wanted to, hey, uh, we will do something that it's, I don't know, that, that, that we never done before. You know, we want to make it sound a little bit more black metal. We want to mix trash and black metal here and there. And we want it to sound dark, but we don't want to scream it. And okay, so let's do that song like that. And we like the way, the, the way it turned out. Uh, we like that it worked, uh, at least for us. And then what we had for the first album, for, for the third album that we already had like four songs, then we said, you know what? Let's agree to keep that and then we're going to face into the new things that we're going to do mm -hmm. based on how we worked in the shape. Like we're going to we're going to build it from one, I don't know, one or two riffs and then everyone's going to go like, I want to put this here. I want to change this. I want to make this longer. I want to make this harder. And at this point, it's like, um, it's really cool because it's a, as a, as a, as a vocal, what you want is to try all the range you have, right? I mean, I, I want to growl here and I want to sing here and I want to whisper here. But sometimes most of the bands, you can't do that, right? You have your own style, you have to keep the things going. And here it's like, okay, you do what you want, do what you feel is best. And then we'll just, we'll decide later. Uh, I, 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 I practice the song with the guys. And they tell me what they want, but at, uh, at the time we get to the, you know, to the studio and record it, that's when we say, you know what, I liked it better like this. I think it sounds better like that. And then we just make a couple of takes and just decide which one sounds better. Okay. And yeah, and, and the shape is was it was pretty pretty weird because we didn't even plan to do it. I and mean, just uh, Chewy uh, the viejo macabro, he simply said, yeah, you know what, I want, I feel like doing this at this point before the album, before the end of the year. And I go like, well, I guess we can't do it. <laughs> and why not? We, we struggled a little bit. We, it was a bit harder than we thought. But yeah, I mean, it came out pretty well. 
Also, it got delayed because of the video. <laughs> yeah. I know you said that, you know, you incorporate black metal here and, and sort of stuff like that. But you also have this really trippy, doomy sort of thing that I, I think kind of underlines it or underscores the whole thing. And I kind of really dig that. Well, the 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 part of the of the of the band it, it came out like automatically for me because most of the songs were already composed. I mean, the structure of the song was already done. The music was already there. So they, hey, can you help us out with the uh, with the lyrics? Well, okay. How do you call this song? Uh, it's uh, alive to kill again. Okay. And it was like do me at some points, and it was like uh, I don't know more old school heavy metal. And okay, that's something that I've never heard before, but okay, let's try it. And uh, I think that it was because at the time there was not really a drummer there. So we asked for our help uh, for Jose Wheeler, the guy from Tree Wheeler Band. Mm -hmm. And he helped us with the drums. And he is from a rock and roll stoner <laughs> band. So he has a lot of influences like that. So he left a lot of that in there. And the band was actually marketed at the first album like a stoner band mm -hmm. like a stone stoner horror metal band and I'm like eh, i guess you want to throw sky in there well <laughs> <laughs> oh that sounds fantastic i'm just thinking like i think i might have a really good idea for you guys <laughs> sure. or it might be awful <laughs> but you guys should like do like the the wedding word versions of your songs under the name the luminous noise of life <laughs> <laughs> and just do great. the dancey version <laughs> and go do all the weddings that's where the money is you know? that's a good one you know we can play <laughs> yeah we just need a guy to praise like that <laughs> like i was like yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And you can do your like whispers that you practice <laughs> just in a very, very happy tone. <laughs> and maybe a black metal movie. vocal here and there. Yeah, and you know, instead of going, I just go like yeah. it can work. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. It can work. I'll start with my family. I mean, everyone wants a free man for their weddings, right? Right. And then you'll never <laughs> be hired again the minute you start screaming like a metal head. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they know me. I'm pretty sure that they expect it at some point. If I don't yeah, do it, they will ask for it. <laughs> I mean, it's a wedding, right? There has to be some pain here and there. Ouch! <laughs> I like that thinking. It's a wedding. There needs to be some pain here. <laughs> right. I, mean, I, all... I thought it's like con constant pain from there onwards. <laughs> like, oh, it's just a little bit every now and then. I mean, and nothing is all that bad, right? Right, yeah, Everything. I'm just kidding. Bruce here has a wonderful <laughs> marriage of decades to yeah, his 30 wife. years, like, 30 years, yeah, yeah, just well, last two weeks ago, yeah, 30 years crazy. Oh, that's amazing! It's it is crazy. amazing. Congratulations, like, thank you. Yeah. Congratulations to both you and Denise. It's like um, it's an amazing accomplishment, especially in today's day and age, right? Where nothing really lasts, you know what? No, you know what it is, like, she knows what she's got. Right. Well, <laughs> she knows how fucking lucky she is. Right. Yeah. She knows. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like you keep on posting on Facebook. You just get sexier and sexier every day. <laughs> uh, every day, right. <laughs> um, so what do you guys have planned now? Are you still continuing to write music? Or are you uh, – what's, oh. uh, what's in the cards? Well, the first thing that we have, we need to work on the third album because uh, we do have commitments here and there. As I mentioned, where we're planning on the on the Hell and Heaven and Monterey Metal Fest, as we're not yet confirmed. I mean, we do the the Nick Fury thing, right? We operate as if we are going to play it. Sure. Now, sure. if we get the confirmation, we're ready. If we don't, well, we don't. We're still ready for anything, right? We have a a, a gig coming up that it's probably the first gig that we organize by ourselves, for ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna play in November 18 here in Monterey. So we're expecting a, a we're to record, uh, maybe just get some some pieces there for future videos, you know, some some stock video footage. And we want to invite people that never seen us before. That's, that's basically what we're going for. And so we invited the, the guy from Tree Wheeler Band and the guys from The Burial, which are two, awesome bands from Monterey 
And we wanted to invite a lot more because we have a lot of, of friends uh, that have their own bands. But, you know, at the moment, we are focusing on changing from being a band that plays like uh, 40 minutes to one hour to be uh, to have a, you know, a headlining fest, uh, set. Like, I don't know, one hour, one hour and a half. We're, we're switching to that. So we invited these guys because we wanted to offer them, just give us your longest set, you know? Mm-hmm. It's uh, just three bands. Give us your longest set. We'll be playing from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m., something like that. Wow. Just do what you want, right? If someone will pick up the slack, if you don't want to pick up the the one-hour one. So just do your own thing. And, uh, well, we have those. And um, we have a couple of other commitments of other small, uh, well, local guests, which turned into a little bigger in December. So we basically have December all booked. And we need to find space to work on the on the, on the new album, right. and we also need to find space to get the new the new videos that uh, that we that we have in mind because we uh, the first two videos that we made uh, we tried to make them like horror movies right like based on Suspiria and, and movies like that with with the lightning and everything, and now we want to go like uh, eight small budget good movie right gotcha. so sort of like near dark like lost boy something like that it's, mm-hmm. we, we want to go there and it's gonna take a little time there it's uh, you know making videos like that it's i don't know it's looks awesome but it's a lot of work particularly if you don't have that much money to work with right you have to work it when when you can so it's gonna be it's gonna be busy end of the of the year and so we're already thinking about you know future releases because we started uh doing concept albums right uh, the first album it's like uh like a giallo movie. The second album is like a zombie movie. We want the third album to be like a dark movie, uh, like soundtrack to a dark movie. But then we said, hey, you know what? Let's just slow down with the concepts from now on. Then we're just going to make like small two songs piece just released online. And, and we get like 10 tracks of new songs. And okay, we just pull it all together, sell it as a CD. Someone wants it, we'll send it over to you. Otherwise, it's everything. It's on Spotify. Everything's in on Deezer. Everything you can find it online. So that's basically what what we're working towards now. But it's it's a little complicated because we do get very excited with the things that we do. We, all of us always want us to have a band where you can do horror things, you know, horror homages or, or tributes. We get excited and then we go like, uh, ah, let, let's do a, a a werewolf song. All right. <laughs> So, okay, I have an idea. This one is like silver. It's from a werewolf hunter's point of view. Oh, I have one from the victim's point of view. Oh, I have one about the, you know, the the, the tribe, the, the, how they work and, and how they live. And okay, did anyone write anything about a specific werewolf? No. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so I guess we have to work on that. And we have like six ideas for, for new songs. And it's like, uh, it, it, it gives you like a little bit more of a, Ahead. We have to learn to work, yeah, as a, we work as a unit, but we want to do everything, you know, and that's that, but sometimes it makes things a little bit more complicated. But now that, that, that we have this idea of just, you know, I think that, I think it was Tom Morello that once said when he recorded the No Shelter song for Godzilla, that he said, oh, it's so liberating to just everything, all of your ideas to put into one song and not have to worry about other nine songs, just amazing. And it, and we felt it with the shape, like, yeah, we like working like that because it's faster. You know, in two months, you have a new release. You can make a video for it. You can market it. You can, I don't know, you can do a lot of things. And then when you get a new idea, you just step right into that one. So at the, at the moment, we're struggling with downsizing to one song, but also finishing an album. So it's like we're right. pulling to everywhere. <laughs> no, but that's, that's, it can be a good problem to have. Yeah, I, by the way, did do a little bit of a horror mini movie for one of my bands, Silentium Songs, called Game. If you want to go check it out, it, yeah, it was definitely. definitely like my my baby. Like I've produced our videos and everything, but definitely just wanted to get that story out there. In my band, I'm the like, and I'm using quotation marks here, creative director when it comes to outside the music 
Oh, right. So I, I get to do what I want to do, and the guys are like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know? So the, what you guys have is super interesting, but I can like imagine that it's hard to rein in the ideas and find the focus that works right now for this specific thing. Like, because all of those point of views sounded like excellent. And maybe <laughs> it's like something that could actually fit into the same video. The point of view changes, like, you know, right. first you're the wolf, then you're the victim, then you're the hunter. And like, you know, that the story builds on like that, but it just takes some facilitating and it always takes that one person who has the nerves and the vision and the like patience <laughs> to right. herd the fucking cats. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> yeah, make definitely. it happen. Is that you, Hollow? Is that your job, herding cats? <laughs> no, no, it's like... <laughs> I, it was a couple of weeks ago that I was I was hanging out with the uh, with the guitarist with uh, Viejo Macabro, and we were like raining ideas, right? Uh, let, let's do this. We need we need to to work on the on video. And then I don't know. The good thing about this is that we are uh, we are friends, and and when we start, hey, you know what? That one's not that good. You know? <laughs> that, that, that's not real. That, that's not going to work. Not not because. Uh, at some point, it's not about it's not a good idea. It's just because I mean we already have a little experience on on making videos. I mean not not on the on the producing side, but just starring in them. And you know that an idea that it's like there's gonna be like two minutes on the screen is gonna take you like ten hours to record, right? Right. Right. So yeah, like, well, okay. Let's just try to keep it simple. Let's just try to get to the point. But every idea that we have, it's you know it's it's heard. I mean, even if, even if it's something that it's like, not not not. I mean, we can't we can't take this off. We, we can't work with it. We still analyze it and see if we if there's any way or someone that we know that can help us. You know, because there's a lot of people else that is working on on making good videos here in, in the city, and uh, and and well, you can just give them a call, see if they're interested. I mean, you don't have to make the video with just one producer right or, or one cameraman or one effects guy you can you can work with many of them and as long as the person that is in charge the director is okay with it then i guess that is going to work we, we 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 don't even have a director at the point so <laughs> it could we, be we, you, <laughs> could be you yeah. as long as, as I, I can keep my mind in one track so i guess I could. <laughs> right <laughs> like just like i don't know just imagine i'm drinking after a day of shooting and I said, hey, picture this. Alien <laughs> werewolf. Like <laughs> nice. I am picturing it and it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and, and at some point you get those stakes, like I don't know, like the song like, <laughs> like ah. yeah. Nice. Alien werewolf, and he gets attacked by a vampire mummy. <laughs> vampire mummy and, and then they play home. a wedding. They they played a wedding, <laughs> <laughs> and the priest starts dancing, and he steals the bride. And yeah. see, we're already <laughs> brainstorming here. <laughs> That's was, the thing, you know. There was actually a really relevant question on the internet the other day, whereas like you know, if a vampire attacks you, it's gonna suck your blood, and that's what you're gonna do, and and the werewolf is just gonna rip you to pieces. And but what does the mummy do? Like, why are they scary? Do they beat you up? Or like, what, <laughs> what, what do they do? Like, choke you with some toilet paper or whatever, like, you know, they're wrapped in? Like, you know, what happens? They offer you a napkin, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the wedding. And just, you know. <laughs> nice. Everyone have a good time. So I don't know what the mommy does. I mean, with look scary, that's all, right? Right. And they're, you know, because their mummies are always, they're like the slow zombies, you know, a zombie will eat your brain. But, you know, then you have the really scary, like run really fast 28 weeks or 28 days later, oh. which I think was the first franchise to bring the really scary, really fucking fast, like run like a crazy person zombies. But like the mummies will always just be like, <laughs> and, shit. and it's like, you can get away from them. And there is no specific threat other than they're like, I don't know, really dusty. <laughs> Do they make you sneeze? 
Are they only dangerous for those with asthma? I it's, don't know. It's the <laughs> the bane people with with allergies, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just like flapping around. And mummies <laughs> are the things nice. that we try to stay away from. So springtime and Egypt, those are the two biggest threats. <laughs> That's very interesting. Oh, good God. Yeah, it's been a long day. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm running out of, I, I mean, I've ran out of my questions here. Do you have anything that we, you want to talk about that we didn't cover? Well, um, I guess that it's, uh, uh, ever since last time we talked, we, we included a new guitar player uh, in the band, uh, Antonio mm-hmm. Saucedo. Uh, he, he brought a little something that, that was missing from the band because the band had like, uh, pretty much the guitar parts all covered with with viejo macabro, and Bader was doing a great job, you know, with the with the bass, and uh, JC was doing a great job in the drums. But there was like something missing, you know. Like there's always, I mean, you do you, you get the question sometimes, why do you need two guitars, right? And it's not exactly because the sound will improve or or something like that. I think it's just a matter of great ideas, right? Yeah, including a second guitar player is just like, okay, you know what? I'm listening to this riff. I hear it, but I think that if I do this at the same time, it's just gonna sound better. Right. And I think that that's what we got with that. And also, you know, a new point of view, a fresh, a fresh view, and uh, and he's a great, a great guitar player. So the other thing that happened is that now we have a better time when we're on stage. Nice. That's the good thing. I mean, it's. I mean, I, 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 when, when, when I, when I heard it, it's like, you know, I just think, right. I don't really know exactly where we're going with the music. You guys, that, that's the thing that you, that you do best, right. If I try to do it, I'm just gonna like bring you back. Right. I'm going to step that you makes back. Sense. But that guy came, came through and immediately everything started to do sound better, you know, and it's, uh, at the same, at the time when they asked, "Do we want a new guitar player?" I said, "Well, that's up to you guys. You feel you need it, you do it." Right. But I was so glad that they did, man. It was that's amazing. Great. It's uh, we sound better, and and he also brings this little, you know, that every every band has a member that you turn back whenever something goes wrong. Right. Like uh, this guy knows what we're gonna do, so, so that's him. I mean, he's a guy and. He's a new guy in our band, but he's been in like, I don't know, 20 bands in the past. Sure. He knows exactly what to do, when to do it. He knows what decision to make. So we just turn back. And even though all of us have like 20 years of, of experience in music, experience in music, I mean, we turn to him like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> right. That's great. That, it does make things fast, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, that it's easier to get to the vision, like make it actually happen with somebody uh, with that much experience. Right. Yeah. And, and at some point, I finally understood why Slipknot has nine members, right? <laughs> but yeah, the more people. <laughs> too many, maybe. <laughs> too many opinions. Like, too many opinions. But yeah, I mean, it's okay, I guess. If someone says something that no one else likes, like, yeah, come on, we're seven against two. Oh, right, yeah. we'll kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, Habo, that's going to bring us to the end here. We're running up on time. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you taking awesome. the time. There you know. Thank you, guys. It was well. lovely meeting you. Hope to yeah. see you soon. It was amazing to meet you. Okay. And you enjoy too. the company of your family and all the open doors. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I'll talk to you soon <laughs> online. Yes, we're out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together, we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nim But the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!